family and friends were gathered here today to celebrate the marriage of Melanie and Eric. You've come here to share in this formal commitment that they're about to make to each other to offer your love and support to the union and to allow them to start their married life together surrounded by the people dearest and most important to them. Melanie and Eric, thank you for your presence here today and ask for your blessing, encouragement, and support for their decision to be married. The yellow rose has been placed on the chair, recognizing a special guest who is present with us in spirit today. Melanie's father, Mr. Melvin W. Hall, who blessed his family with a lifetime of love, support, and devotion. Today, May 28th, would have been the 42nd wedding anniversary for Melanie's parents. May this act remind us all to celebrate those who have touched our lives, but are not able to be with us in person today. We are a part of everyone who has ever loved us. Let us remember them all with a moment of silent reflection. This is a day that the Lord has made. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Melanie and Eric, this is the time we chose to become husband and wife. They're not only to witness your commitment to each other, but to share the moment in which you both every happiness in the world to us. As family and friends, you've played a part in bringing Melanie and Eric to this moment, and we know that in many and various ways you will continue to support and uphold their relationship. So within this framework of loyalty and commitment, marriage enables the establishment of a home. With your tolerance, patience, and mutual respect, while well, an affection developed into a deep and lasting relationship with each other, and together with your five children, Bam, Pai, Carolyn, Brooke, and Drew. When we map those two portions of Holy Scripture appropriate for your marriage this afternoon, the first one is from Romans 5, where St. Paul tells us where love comes from. The second one is the first Corinthians 13, where St. Paul tells us how it works out. And it's fun. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith in this grace, in which we now stand. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. Hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Love is patient and kind, it is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited, it is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and it's not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's faults, but delights in the truth. It's always ready to excuse the trust and the hope. It's always ready to endure whatever comes. True love does not come to an end. Melanie and Eric, as your minister on this very special day, I guess it behooves me to say something that's really meaningful. That's not going to be very hard because you chose two really, really good scriptures. One of them is very familiar for weddings and the other one is kind of unique. And that's good because that gives me enough ideas for at least a 45 minute wedding song. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Not to, not to uh, but I do want to share a thought. One of the things that we've heard over and over reading that word. Love is important word, especially on the day of marriage. Because implied in that word are all the things uh, that they don't in that kind of faithfulness and trust and commitment and maybe even some forgiveness for the one for a while. You may or may not know that when Paul wrote these words, they were written in the Greek language. And the Greek language are actually are three different words for love they took. The first one is a little Greek word that's pronounced delay. Delay describes the love relationship that exists between a father and son, or a mother and daughter, or a brother and sister, that sort of a paternal kind of 
I would now like to address all of you, Melanie and Eric's family and dear friends who have joined them here today. You have heard the commitment and the promises that they have made to each other and to their children. Would you as family and friends continue to support Melanie and Eric and uphold their commitment to each other and to their new family as you witness it here today? If this is your intent, then please answer, we will. We will.
Melanie and Eric have consented together in marriage and have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledge and have declared the same before God and this company of witnesses, I pronounce them to be husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bond is joined together, let's go on the May Almighty Everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, granted by your blessed Melanie and Eric and your children, Grant, Ty, Carol, and Brooke, and Drew, they live together according to word and promise as a new family. Strengthen them in love and faithfulness to each other, sustain and defend them in all trials and temptations through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to present to you for the very first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Eric Epps, Mr. Boy. <laughs>